very good morning to all of you. Every Indian has a dream, an aspiration, an aspiration to someday become financially independent, someday to become rich, someday to have enough money to have good retired life, someday to become a karodpati. And I think this dream is very reasonable. You know, Indians by nature are very hardworking. We work hard in school, in college, in jobs. We slog for years, for decades. And it's very basic to expect that we will have a good retired life. I want to share with you some interesting data. As per the research report of Oxfam Billionaire, as on January 2020, there are only around 1.4 crores of Indians who have a net worth of more than 1 crore. In a population of 140 crores, this is just 1%, which means you have 99% of the population who are poor or middle class. They cannot expect to have a good retired life. Now, this is happening when India has recently become the fifth largest economy of the world. We surpassed UK. So as a whole, as a country, we are doing phenomenally so well. But at individual's level, we are struggling. People don't have enough wealth to retire properly. Now, who is responsible for this? Is government responsible? Should government be taking care of us? If we talk about India's growth, in 1947, the poverty rate in India was 80%. From 80%, it came down to 40% in 2004. And 2021, the poverty rate has fallen to 12%. So government as a country, we have done very good. You know, when we became independent, one of the key objective was to eradicate poverty. Yes, it could have been much earlier, but now the priorities have to change. The priorities have to change that every Indian becomes rich. Every Indian becomes karodpati. Now who is going to do it? Is government going to do it? Is it fair to expect government to transfer money in a bank account? To transfer one crore in a bank account? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Government can give us an environment. Government can act as an enabler. It's for us to take the responsibility of becoming rich. Now, fortunately, as a financial advisor, I had the chance of working with this top 1% of people who are rich, who are super rich. Now, what I've learned from them is that you can get rich in different ways. And I'll share that with you so that we all can learn from them and see how we can follow the journey, how we can learn from the rich. Now, according to me, there are four ways by which you can become rich. One, work hard. And I think, you know, as Indians, we are definitely working very hard. But can working hard make us rich? I don't think so. You know, when I travel, I talk to, you know, rickshaw pullers, taxi driver. Recently, I met a person in Mumbai, a taxi driver. He has been riding taxi for 50 years. He doesn't have any savings. And these guys, they work for 16, 18 hours. So hard work alone is not going to make us rich. If I, took up, if I talk about the second thing, is education. Education is very important because it allows to upgrade ourselves, to get better skills, to earn more for same amount of effort. And I think India is doing phenomenally well in terms of education. The literacy rate is going up and we have a literacy rate of more than 75% now. But is education going to 
make us rich, make us karodpati. I don't think only education can help us. It will be an enabler because if you look at so many educated people, all of them are not karodpatis. The third is a lottery or a you know a windfall gain from somewhere. You win, you know, in Kwan Banega Karodpati, you get money. I think that probability is very less. And even if you get that chance, what we have seen from the experience, that windfall gain or lottery amount never stays with you. People end up spending that amount. So this is not a very reliable way. The last and the most important is investments. What I have learned from my clients, from the rich people I interact, that most of them have become rich by investing. By investing in real estate, by investing in stock market and other assets. Now, if you ask me out of the four, which is the most important? I think all are equally important. Anything single won't help you become rich. And fortunately, we all work towards, you know, spending a lot of hours and work hard. We educate ourselves. What is missing is the investment knowledge, is the financial knowledge, financial awareness. And today, in my 15 minutes of talk, I want to give this magic to you. I want to give this idea to you. I'll give you a secret which will ensure that after 15 minutes of talk, you're ready to make investments. You don't need anything beyond this. So stay with me on this. Now, when I talk about my idea, it's a double engine growth. It's a double engine growth in your investment journey, which will turbocharge your journey towards being a karodpati. So the first engine is of compounding. Now, compounding is a very simple term. We have studied compounding in schools, but according to me, it's the most powerful thing which humans know about. In fact, the great Albert Einstein said that compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. So how does compounding works? Compounding works when you make an investment, that gives you an interest, and this interest in coming years earn more interest. It's like expanding family. Father gives birth to a child, child gives birth to grandson, and so on. And in few decades, the family becomes large. Let me explain this with an example. Let's say there's a person called Ravi, okay? Now, Ravi makes an investment in fixed deposit, let's say, which gives 10% interest. So, one lakh investments which he does, next year, the interest which will come will become is 10,000 rupees. A year after that, the interest which he will earn is 11,000. What is happening is, he is earning interest on the principal and the interest which he earned in the previous year. Now, 1,000 rupees, you know, doesn't make a lot of difference, right? But the magic of compounding happens when you invest for a long term. Like in this case, in the case of our friend Ravi, if he invests this 1 lakh, in the same 10% fixed deposit for 20 years, this amount becomes equal to 5.7 lakhs. Otherwise, you would have earned an interest of only 2 lakhs. As a simple interest, you would have earned 2 lakhs. But just by staying invested, not touching, letting it compound over 20 years, he is able to grow his wealth by 2.85 times. That's a simple example. And if you are able to follow compounding, it's very powerful. And see, this is not a theoretical concept. Let me take an example from a living legend, the great Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is one of the richest men on earth. He is worth $120 billion, which is equal to almost 10 lakh crore. And my dear friends, he has been able to accumulate this wealth just by investments. The great, War great Warren Buffett started investing at the age of 11. Yes, at the age of 11. Today, he's 93 years old. He made his wealth by compounding it over a period of 82 years. You'll be surprised to know 
that 90% of Warren Buffett's wealth came after the age of 65. So compounding what is required is you need to give it time. The wealth creation needs time. There's no shortcut. And if you give time, you know, the effect starts like a snowball. But over a period of time, it becomes avalanche. So that's the power of compounding. Now, when we have to you know, take advantage of compounding, what is important is two factors. One is the time horizon, how long you're investing. Longer, if the time horizon is, better will be the benefit of compounding. Second most important thing is, where is your investment? What is the rate of return at which it is compounding? And today you have various avenues. You can invest in fixed deposits, you can invest in real estate, you can invest in equities. There are various avenues. And this matters a lot. Let me give you a simple example. If Ravi, a friend whom I described earlier, decides to invest in a fixed deposit, these days the rate of fixed deposit is 7%. Now at 7% in 20 years, the 1 lakh corpus will become 4 lakhs. Okay? But if it decides to invest in equities, which invest further in the stock market, this amount, the return which is expected to come at 15%, grows to become, become 16 lakhs. So if Ravi invests in fixed deposit, he gets 4 lakhs. In the stock market, in equities, he's getting 6 lakhs, which is 4x. Phenomenal. It's mind-blowing. I'm sure that this is known to most of the people. I'm sure people take advantage of equities. I'm sure majority of the people's portfolio is in equities. Now let me share with you some interesting data. In a population of 140 crores in India, there are approximately 70 crores pen card holder. You need a pen card for investment. Now out of 70 crores, there are only four crore mutual fund investors through which you invest in stock market and other capital market. This is only 6% of the population. Despite knowing the fact that in long term, equity does phenomenal wealth creation, only 6% of people have invested in the markets. The same percentage for US is at 52%. One of the reasons why people of America are rich is because they have participated in the growth of the country. When you invest in equities, you are investing in the companies which grows. In fact, largest of the companies in India, ICICI, HDFCs, majority of the holding is with foreign investors. Foreign investors have more trust in Indian companies than Indian investors. Now the question mark is, why is the participation so less? I keep talking to people. In fact, yesterday when I came, I spoke to teachers about the experience on investing, and I keep trying to learn from different people. Now generally, I get three reasons for such a low participation. One, it's risky. Equities is risky. Second, they don't have the knowledge. Third, they don't have the money. Now, according to me, all these three reasons are very fair. And what I feel, the problem is in a mindset. We have put equity as a risky instrument. Whenever we think about equity, we think as risk. That mindset needs to change. When you think about equity, it should be about wealth. It should be about growth. That is the mindset which I want to change for you. So let me take each of these issues one by one. Talking about risk, equity is definitely very risky. It's one of the most riskiest investments. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen. In 2008, we had a great financial crisis. The stock market in India crashed by 60%. Investors lost 60% of the wealth. In COVID, 2020, very recently, markets crashed by 40%. So people burn their fingers. But what is important is that if investor continues to hold the investments, market always bounces back. 
the problem comes they get worried they redeem they withdraw the money when markets are down that's where the problem is and my dear friends life is full of risk when you drive a car it's risky going in a plane is risky getting married is also risky so risk is everywhere and i think you know according to me risk is like electricity <coughs> if you touch electricity by your hand there is a probability you may get a shock it can be fatal you can die but look around everywhere we are using electricity light mic conditioning cooling everywhere so it's about how you manage it and let me give you two good examples about the equity risk see sensex which constitutes top 30 stocks top largest stocks and in an indicator of the stock market was started on april 1st 1979 with a base value of 100 44 years back the value was 100 recently it touched 70000 it has become 700 times in 44 years it has given a per annum return of 16.3% pre tax and post tax of 15% approximately no other investments have given that kind of return and you were not supposed to do anything just invest and hold if you would have invested forgotten the investment not checked then also you would have got this kind of return in long term equities does phenomenally well and in coming years coming decades it belongs to india india is expected to become super power the economy is going to do very well now if economy is expected to do very well equities will continue to do well let me share with you one more data point as per data in any period of sensex of 7 years if you would have invested in sensex for 7 years the minimum return which has come is 5% average is 15 minimum is 5 so even the minimum return <coughs> is similar to fixed deposit return phenomenal so as you hold your equities it becomes very safe so it's all about mindset guys the risk is not there if you hold equities for long term now second challenge which people have is they don't have the knowledge i don't think you need lot of knowledge for investments these days you have mutual funds <coughs> these days you have mutual funds mutual funds are schemes run by big companies like icic hdfc billa you give money to them you can invest even up to 500 rupees there are experts who invest in your behalf in the markets and whatever is the profit is distributed back and they charge very minimal it's a very transparent low cost regulated schemes and currently there are around 45 lakh crores and there are mutual funds which replicate sensex or nifty so you don't have to worry about which you know stocks to buy which funds to buy just buy the nifty fund and you will be fine so you don't need lot of knowledge so the second problem should not be really a big issue the third challenge which comes is people say we don't have the money now for investments you don't need lot of money what is required is when are you starting and there is a beautiful concept called systematic investment plan sip in sip you have 500 rupee going from your bank account into any mutual fund scheme which you have selected and what happens over a period of time this becomes very large so what is important is whether you are starting or not you only need 500 rupee guys that's about it if you are able to do it you can start the investment you don't have to wait for money to get collected and then invest and let me give you an example of you know two of my friends in fact their partner in my firm also i have a friend kunal he's generally very very conservative and he prefers to do fixed deposits now if kunal decides to do monthly investment of 5000 rupee 
in fixed deposit for 20 years, this corpus becomes 26 lakhs. My other friend, Akhil, who is generally aggressive, if he decides to invest 5,000 rupee on a monthly basis in equities for 20 years, this corpus becomes 76 lakhs. It's 3x. You need to just start small and gradually it becomes big. So that's the power. And SIP has been picking up. Currently, you have, in the month of November, almost 17,000 crore of SIP investment was done in India. Way back in April 2016, this figure was only 3,000 crore. We are learning. We are learning about investments. There have been a lot of promotion on mutual funds, Sahi Hai, SIP, but there's a lot more need to be done. We have to move from 6% participation to 52% participation, which is happening in America. And investing is very simple. After this session, when you go back home, just do a Google mutual fund SIP investment. There'll be many apps which will come up. You can invest through bank, brokers, and you can just start a SIP of 500 rupees, even in Sensex fund. It's so simple. The challenge is to start. Now, this is the first engine which I wanted to talk about and which is, which is very important. Now, I want to turbocharge your growth towards making you Karodpati. How do I want to turbocharge? See, one big challenge which we see with the investors when I interact with the investors is that the investors who are investing, they are not being able to increase their investments. I have an employee in company, Rotas. He has been working with us for 10 years. 10 years back also, I told him to invest. He said, I don't have any savings. In 10 years, his salary must have gone up by six, seven times. He still says, I don't have any savings. So guys, what is happening? What's happening is that our income is growing. The income in India is growing at 10%, but our expenses are going much faster. As per recent RBI study, savings percentage in India has fallen to 47. That is damn low. So people are not being able to save. The reason? The mobile phone in our pocket. We have Instagram, we have YouTube, we get influenced by the lifestyle of other people. We want to spend more. Our expenses are running much. That's a big problem. And then you have apps like Amazon, Swiggy, Zomato. You can order instantly. And now you have fintech companies, they're saying buy now, pay later. In fact, when I was in Gurgaon recently, outside a hotel, there was a banner. Get married now, pay later. <laughs> so the culture of spending is taking away big time in India. In fact, RBI recently went against fintech companies. They are trying to restrict so that people don't end up taking a lot of debt. Indians are taking more and more of debt, and it has become a big problem. To overcome this challenge, the second engine of growth is something called step up SIP. In step up SIP, you increase your SIP amount by a small percentage every year. It could be 10%, 20%, whatever. Whenever your salary or income increases, increase this amount. It brings discipline. And it's simple. In fact, Warren Buffett guides us that when you have to invest, normally what's the rule we follow? You get income, you get salary, you make expenses, and whatever is left is our savings and we invest. That should change. Whatever is the income, you have to first make subtraction of investment and whatever is left has to be the expenses. So it's quite simple, guys. And let me give you a simple example of the step up SIP, the power of a step up SIP. I told you about my friends Kunal and Akhil, you know, who were able to accumulate 26, 000 and 26 lakhs and 76 lakhs by investing in fixed deposit in equity. Now there's one more friend, Nikhil, if he decides to do step up SIP of 5,000 rupee every month and increases the amount by 10% per annum. By the end of 20 years, he will accumulate 1.4 crores. In fact, friends, you only need to invest 3,500 rupees on a monthly basis for 20 years to become crorepati. And if even this is more bigger amount, 
then you can invest only 700 rupees per month to become a karodpati in 30 years, which is not a very large amount. So what I feel, being a karodpati, being a rich is very easy. To conclude, as per Goldman Sachs, India is going to become the second largest economy by 2075. We are 50 years away from that goal. I think the real achievement of India will be when everyone is a karodpati. Being rich, being karodpati is not the right of few 1% of few people. It's the right of everyone. The dream for which I have for India is we all have to become rich. And this will happen when you take action. And you just not take action, you have to spread the financial awareness to your friends, family, and that is the time when India will become superpower. Thank you so much.